odds against the Tigers after Rodney Washington was hot on the heels of Bruce Eugene. Forced Eugene to throw the ball out of the back of the end zone, and now it will be goal to go, Sam, from the 18-yard line. That's an interesting call right here coming up by Doug to see what he's going to pull out of his hat this time. Well, there you see the bunch right there. Chris Day obviously unhappy with the coverage that he's getting. <laughs> well, he's taking things into his own hands yeah. right there. And uh, the receivers, they always see that second guy. Yep. It's the retaliator, isn't it? Always. Yep. Second and goal from the 18. Eugene flushed out of the pocket again. Breaks one tackle at the 25. And going to be throwing it out of bounds and out of the end zone. Tiant Lacefield back there with him as well, along with Brandon Sweeney. And again, you know, Eugene just shows great strength because that could have been a huge loss. Unbelievable strength by Eugene. Just eluding the pass rush. Buying time for these receivers. And the Golden Lions are doing a great job in the secondary. Great coverage but because Eugene is buying these receivers a lot of time to get open. So you got to give some credit to that secondary for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Well, Marty Stewart has worked up a marvelous game plan tonight. The defensive coordinator for these Golden Lions. Third down and 18. Again, as we told you, Grambling number one in the league in converting, but this is third and big. Eugene flushed out of the pocket again. Let's it go. It's complete to Douglas inside the five yard line. There is a flag on the play, but you might expect that could be either offensive if Douglas maybe got a little push off. Maybe it's a hold. Boy, if this is against Grambling, it's huge. I think this is going to be a hold in the uh, defensive secondary. Uh, watching one of the defensive backs for Arkansas Pine Bluff right there. He got his hands on the Grambling guy a little bit before that ball was thrown. Let's check in with George Holy. McCollum. On the defense against an eligible receiver, that's automatic first down. And that is the huge aspect of that play. It is a first down. That would not have been, obviously, it was goal to go. It would have been a fourth down situation from the three yard line instead with the defensive penalty it's first and goal inside the 10 yard line when you watch Eugene coming back out this guy he's definitely the best quarterback in the SWAC conference some of the things he's doing tonight I am so impressed with him you saw the way he stepped up in yeah. the pocket on that last play he had pressure stands in there delivers that ball to Douglas excellent play that does however wipe away a completion and a catch for Douglas but it's first down, Grambling. Eugene under pressure again. The defender fell down. Moses Harris caught the pass. Touchdown, Tigers. And Zachary Barnett, he's hurt the corner. The corner that went down on that play. He's still down, Barry. He's still down on the field. I don't know if he got, got his foot caught, caught down there, got tangled up a little bit with the receiver. And that's the reason that receiver was wide open like that, because they got a little bit tangled, and the cornerback, he's still down, Barnett. So Grambling does answer on the play with 44.9 seconds to go. You watch right here, man coverage right here. He's trying to get his hands on the receiver. And right there, something happens. I don't know. He was trying to grab the receiver a little bit. I can't tell exactly what happens on this play, but it's just a little slant route. And the cornerback, he gets tangled up a little bit with the receiver, and he just falls down on the play. But he's hurt, Barry. Well, you know, Sam, sometimes you get a hand in there with that jersey, you get your fingers caught up in that. You know, it could it possibly have dislocated a finger or something because it looked as if Zachary was grabbing for one of his hands. And you see Zachary getting up right there, and I think he'll be back. He'll be back tonight. I think he has, a, has an injury, like you said, to his hand. 6'2", 200-pound junior from St. Louis, Missouri. You know he's going to be back in this ball game tonight. But he is in real pain being helped off the field by the... Pine Bluff training staff, 13-play, 75-yard drive capped off by the seven-yard touchdown pass. Eugene to Moses Harris. And Brian Morgan will attempt the point after. And it is good. Barry, what a backbreaker on that, on that drive for Pine Bluff. They were playing some excellent defense. You know, they give up a couple big plays. The screen pass to the tight end on fourth down. You get the penalty on the catch by Douglas that would have brought up, set up fourth down again, fourth and goal. 
and that's just a tough play, tough break for Pine Bluff. And also, you, you, you lose your starting corner, Zachary Barnett, who's been playing some excellent defense out there. So it'll be interesting to see who they come back with at that corner in the second half. I want to take a moment to recognize our student athlete. That is Antoine Smith not playing tonight. Antoine, a second team preseason all SWAC selection. 31 tackles on the season, but more importantly for that young man, he is carrying a 3.52 GPA in electrical engineering. So congratulations to Antoine for the work that he is doing. Okay, we see Zachary on the sideline. They've got those pads off of him. Zachary Barton at the corner, and that's not good, Barry. When you see those pads come off of a cornerback like that, that is not a good sign for our Arkansas Pine Bluff on that sideline. So the kickoff taken by Kerry Washington. He's across the 15-yard line, and that is it. Kerry Washington was met by a host of grambling tacklers on that play. <laughs> Tell you, I thought I was going to get a chance to see Mr. Bull and get a, get a crack at it on that play and make something happen, but Washington takes it instead. You know who makes the stop? Ab Guan. The tailback playing special teams in there, and I had to double check. I was like, okay, Ab. Well, that's what you have to do nowadays. You've got to get those guys, the, the guys with speed that can get down there on those kickoffs and make something happen. And sometimes you have to get a guy that's your tailback or one of your receivers, you know, get a speed guy in there that can get down there and make something happen. Now, if we had seen a big return there, we may have seen Pine Bluff be more adventurous in its play calling, but with no timeouts left, and that return got out to just the 17-yard line. The Golden Lions are going to be content with taking a knee here, and they'll take it again, and that will be... That's the right move, Barry, to, yep. uh, to take a knee right there because you don't have any timeouts. So if you do complete a pass, a long pass down the field, you don't have a timeout. You can't, you know, get your guys back in the huddle. So, you know, this is a good move by Coach Hartman. They played a tough first half, you know, but I know it was heartbreaking. Giving up that play at the end, giving up the touchdown, letting Grandman go ahead when you played so well the entire first half. And that is the end of the first half. And what has to be considered a bit of a shocker from Pine Bluff here, Grambling on a late touchdown with under a minute to play in the second quarter, takes a 17-10 lead into that halftime locker room. Well, Barry, you, you see Doug Williams walk off the field. He's up by seven, but I definitely don't think that Doug is happy about this game. He felt like his team could come in here and pretty much have their way with this Arkansas Pine Bluff team. But Coach Hartman and his troops, they are ready and willing and ready to stand up and make things happen. Well, as we told you, L.C. Greenwood being honored Ladies and gentlemen, this we call your attention to midfield where the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff is pleased to welcome back one of its all-time greatest football players, former NFL All-Pro L.C. Greenwood. Tonight's recognition... Tonight's recognition salutes Mr. Greenwood's numerous collegiate and NFL accomplishments, which over the years have given the university and citizens of Pine Bluff reason to be proud. For four years, Greenwood starred at defensive end for the Golden Lions. He was named to numerous All-American teams. In 1969, he was selected in the 10th round of the NFL draft by the Pittsburgh Steelers. During his 13-year career, Mr. Greenwood uh, Wood anchored Pittsburgh infamous Steel Curtain and helped the Steelers win four Super Bowl championships. He was selected all pro, pro six times and named to numerous NFL teams of the decade during the 1970s. Mr. Greenwood retired in 81 as one of the greatest Pittsburgh Steelers ever with 73 and a half sacks and 14 fumble recoveries. To show appreciation, UAPB and its, and its athletics department joins with the city of Pine Bluff and Mayor Dutch King to officially declare October 18th, 2003 as L.C. Greenwood Day. Let's give Mr. Greenwood a Golden Lion round of applause as he accepts his proclamation. Also, Arkansas m and UAPB Sports Hall of Fame, L.C. Greenwood was recognized back in 2000 but could not attend and it says, in recognition of your outstanding achievements and accomplishments, which have brought honor, prestige, and fame to MNN UAPB, your name is hereby inscribed in the MNN UAPB Sports Hall of Fame, October 21st, 2000.
Congratulations, Mr. Greenwood. Part of the Golden Lion pride, L.C. Greenwood, who, by the way, was a teammate for one year with current Pine Bluff coach Lee Hardman. Battle of the Bands coming up. We're at the break, and Grambling's up by a touchdown. L.C. Greenwood. Thank you. You see, this, this is what kills us. They got to get that off the field because we didn't have any plan for that. Oh, I'm just talking. Is he coming up? We welcome you back to Pine Bluff, Arkansas. They've entertained at the Astrodome, the Superdome, Yankee Stadium, and Soldier Field. They performed at the Orange Cotton Sugar and Rose Bowls. They've often been called the band that never gets tired. Directed by Dr. Larry Pinnell, we welcome from Grambling University, the best band in the land.
question, ladies. What's your name? something to say about it. We're at the break and more halftime entertainment is straight ahead on NBC. Well, he's really taken us to new levels. He's brought customer service to a whole new level. I think we were somewhere in here. I think he's sort of raised the bar. Somewhere in there, between there. You know what he's all about? He's all about this, not about that. What's that gonna get you? Oh, he deserves this award. There's no doubt about it. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more on car insurance.
No one told us to constantly research and develop new ways to generate cleaner electricity. Or maintain a 99.9% .9 reliability rate. While at the same time keeping our price at 15% below the national average. We do it because we live here. Because we're customers too. It's nearly 100 years of providing safe, reliable, affordable power. Simply by trying every day to be the best we can be. That's why you can count. You can count. You can count. On Alabama Power. Kobe, Tiger, Michael, Venus, and Serena. Their names are synonymous with excellence, unparalleled perfection, the ultimate athletes, and mega million stars. In an all-new series, meet these icons. Nothing comes easy, though. Success does not come easy. And I want to have it no other way. Sports Biographies premieres this month on NBC Network. The first episode of Sports Biographies features Kobe Bryant, Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. And we welcome you back to Pine Bluff. We're now under the direction of John Grom. Here they are, the musical machine of the Mid-South.
The musical machine of the Mid-South wrapping up yet another swacktacular halftime. We are at the break. We'll be back with first half highlights. And it's Grambling 17, Pine Bluff 10. Stay with us. We're back in Pine Bluff. What a great game we have for you tonight. Arkansas Pine Bluff trailing Grambling by a touchdown at the break. Great to have you back with us once again, everybody, with Sam Shade, Barry Milligan here with you, and Sam Mateus, Cedric Bowen. He may be one of the smallest guys on the field. He did some big talking, and tonight his Golden Lions have backed it up. And he definitely backed it up on special teams, making plays happen for this Arkansas Pine Bluff team tonight. That's right. Big defensive performance as we take you to our first half highlights. And the Golden Lions got it going right away on special teams. Yes, uh, two blocked field goals in the first half by the Golden Lions right there. You see one right there. Big stop right there. You see the run right here. The running back making a play for Grambling. Excellent field position for Grambling in the first half. And Tremone Douglas coming back after two weeks off gets into the end zone. And we see Mr. Bowen get into the act. He talked the talk, and right here he walked the walk, Barry. Look at him bust through that kickoff coverage down the field, makes the kicker miss. Excellent job by Bowen. And if the Arkansas Pine Bluff running attack isn't deep enough, how about a fourth stringer, James Johnson, getting into the end zone? And we see Mr. Eugene come back right before the half, hitting Mr. Washington for the touchdown. And this has been an excellent game right here, Barry. 
It absolutely has. As we look at our first half numbers, they heavily favor Grambling in terms of the overall numbers. But I tell you again, just the defensive effort, Sam, that you talked about from Pine Bluff, that you you would never know that the Golden Lions are only down a touchdown when you look at these numbers. You look at the numbers right here. Actually, total yardage, Grambling has 300 yards to one. They have double the yardage that Arkansas Pine Bluff has, but the Arkansas Pine Bluff defense has been excellent tonight, superb, getting after Mr. Eugene, but Eugene has been tough in the pocket, standing in there and taking that pressure and getting some passes off. Come on, Dave. And in front of a great crowd once again, as we told you, Arkansas Pine Bluff has drawn among the national leaders in all of 1AA in Lee Hardman's 11 years here, but Grambling will take the second half kickoff, and that is going to be a very, very short return for Octavius Bond, who is the victim again of excellent special teams coverage from Arkansas Pine Bluff. And Grambling will start deep in its own territory to begin the second half. Bruce Eugene and the Tigers. That was great coverage. Arkansas Pine Bluff defense. At the 17-yard line, Eugene will start with four wideouts in the shotgun, barking out the signals to his offense, looking downfield, flushed out of the pocket again. Now he'll let it go, but overthrown. He wanted Tremone Douglas on the far sideline, but overthrew him, and that will bring up a second and ten. And you don't see that that much out of Eugene. He's usually a very accurate quarterback, and he did right there what he did in the first half. He stepped up, and he moved around, gave his receivers time to make plays for him, but right there he's just off the mark a little bit. Well, and that's exactly what Lee Hardman was talking about again, Sam. They want to pressure him. They want to fluster him a little bit and get him out of his comfort zone. And they've done that tonight. They've been yep. in his face all night. They've sent linebackers, sent safeties on blisses. They've really got out to Eugene tonight. On second and ten, he finds his wide receiver, Henry Talbert, on the perimeter. He gets a great block out there from Moses Harris and gets out near the 40-yard line. They'll mark him at the 38-yard line. Big gain of 21 yards and a first down for the Tigers. You watch right here. Eugene, they tried to do this early in the ball game. They tried to get the, get the matchup with the back lined up on the linebackers. And you don't see a linebacker in sight right there. The only person that has a chance is the cornerback for Arkansas Pine Bluff to come in there and get him out of bounds. And with that completion, Bruce Eugene has tied Doug Williams with 484 completions, the all-time career lead at Grambling State. And he's going to add to that a little bit tonight. Oh, <laughs> looking to break it right here and just overthrows Harris at the 36-yard line. Double coverage downfield, stride for stride with him was Keith Scott. Keith Scott doing an excellent job for Arkansas Pine Bluff back there in coverage, you know, running step for step. but. You watch right here, you watch Eugene right here. He's sitting back in the pocket, barely touches it, and look at that arm strength, getting that ball out there. And the ground receiver's gonna have to run a little bit faster because Mr. Eugene, he can get that <laughs> ball out there. He sure can. Second and 10 from the 38. Grambling with a touchdown lead, trying to increase its comfort zone a little bit. Inside handoff on the trap play, Henry Talbert Picks up short yardage before he is dragged down. That is Maurice Troutman. We haven't called his name at all tonight, but this guy is one of the devils on defense in the SWAC. Maurice Troutman, he can get after the quarterback. I tell you, we've been looking for this guy, but he has a tough ma tough matchup tonight facing this tough offensive line of Grambling. They move him around a lot, so you're not going to see him in one place, but he's got some tough matchups facing those tackles for Grambling. Well, it's a big line, too, as he's up against Jonathan Banks at 360 pounds. And again, Eugene flushed out of the pocket, gets it downfield, intended for Chris Day, incomplete. Again, excellent coverage provided by Kiki Scott. Keith. Watch Troutman right here on this play. He's getting up field, and he's working against one of those big tackles for Grambling. He gets knocked back out. He comes back in, and he's chasing after Eugene. He's really trying to get after him, but Eugene does a good job of getting away from him. Well, he's given up 60 pounds to big Andre Bennett, the 6'6", 330-pound sophomore tackle. And Mr. Bennett looks a little bit heavier than 330. <laughs> 
That will bring up a punting situation for Grambling. High arching spiral, fair catch called for and made at the 22-yard line by Kerry Washington. And Kerry Washington, he's also uh, you know, one of those excellent return men the SWAC conference has. He gets back there and Bowen catches a couple punts, but Washington is a guy that can also make it happen. So if he gets a chance tonight, look out for him. Well, and Sam, again, credit this Pine Bluff defense. The third quarter has been a huge quarter for Grambling throughout this season, but Pine Bluff doesn't allow the Tigers to come out of the locker room and get any momentum. And we'll see what Lovelady and company can do on first and 10. And off up the middle, it'll be short yardage. Number one. Right there, that is Cedric Bowen on the carry. They try to get the ball in Bowen's hand because he's a guy that can make it happen. He gets the ball right there. He's bottled up by that Grambling front four. You know, that front four for Grambling, they don't give enough credit because they get after the passer. You know, they cause problems, and they also play the run tough. And that's, sometimes that's hard to find pass rushers that can play the run, and they definitely have a good mix up front. Joshua Kador right there, the big 6'5 sophomore who made that stop. He's a, from Opelousas, Louisiana. Gain of one out of the shotgun on second and nine as Lovelady escapes and barely escapes Leonard Patton. And, and he's Patton. going to be run out of bounds, not able to get rid of it. That'll be a big loss. Leonard Patton did, a, did an excellent job right there. You watch Leonard Patton, he's going to be matched up. He, he was matched up on that last play on, on Bowens, and that's the advantage. Bowens, he's a small back, having a tough time blocking those big linebackers for Grambling as he comes off the corner and causes Lovelady to have to get rid of it. That's going to be a loss of seven on the play. So third down and 16 upcoming for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Four wideouts coming with Lovelady in the shotgun. And that is Cedric Bowen to his right in the backfield. Lovelady flushed out of the pocket. He is dropped. Well, that is just Lovelady great, great play by that front four. Also, line. Kenneth Petway up from his linebacker spot to help out. I like what Gremlin's doing right there. They're forcing, they're sending five rushers. They're forcing the, they're forcing the back, back Bowen. To ha and watch, watch how this pocket collapses on Lovelady. It looks like he has a lane right there. You see J Jimmy Zachary getting in there and making that play on Lovelady. But I tell you, those guys up front for Gremlin are tough and quick. Punning situation upcoming for Pine Bluff deep in his end zone. You're going to get a timeout call, and it appears that Grambling will take timeout indeed. And we've seen this a couple of times this year that the Tigers burn early timeout. We'll see if it comes back to haunt them. We'll take a break. The Tigers are up by seven.
We're back, Arkansas Pine Bluff from five yards deep in its own end zone will have to kick this ball away. The kick is a good one. And at the 45 yard line, however, there is room to roam, plenty of room and barely tackled. Aaron Johnson. For Grambling State, number 39, Aaron Johnson. But again, with a touchdown lead right now, the Tigers are in great shape to add to that seven-point advantage. And with that, we will welcome L.C. Greenwood, a future Hall of Famer in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, honored here this week. This must have brought back some wonderful memories for you, L.C., being back here in Pine Bluff. Oh, uh, yeah, this is uh, actually was really great. Um, a lot of things that happened this weekend was unexpected. Uh, I knew I was being honored, but uh, all the things that they did during the last couple of days were uh, were pretty amazing. I, you know, I was just really kind of yeah. taken apart. And I know Coach uh, Lee Hartman was a teammate of yours for a year. He he says his career has gotten a lot better over the years. I don't know if you would agree with that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, some things you just uh, leave alone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> I'll tell you what, L.C., this uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff defense is playing some fired-up defense tonight. Uh, did you did you get in there in the locker room before the game and give them a pep talk? No. The, actually, I guess they, they must have known that uh, pep talks is not my thing. And, uh, you know, they didn't even invite me down to the locker room. So I was kind of uh, depressed about that because I think that uh, I need to say something to these young kids because this is uh, – uh, this weekend is my weekend. They celebrate, doing all kind of celebrating. So I wanted to see them pull off a win. So I thought maybe I would, I should have uh, just kind of got these guys pumped up. You know how defensive players are. We need to go out there and hit somebody, hurt somebody. <laughs> we definitely do. They are battling awfully hard out there. L.C. Greenwood honored at a black tie function here in Pine Bluff. <clears throat> and I tell you, things. Uh, Certainly in terms of facilities have changed an awful lot. This is a magnificent football facility, isn't it? Yeah, this is really, this is great. I was out on the field. The, the field is good. Uh, the grass, they got good grass on the field. I, I never remember having grass when I played. Here. <laughs> <laughs> As we see, Grambling quarterback Bruce Eugene taking it on his own down to the 10-yard line. That will bring up a fourth down situation here. And once again, the defense has gotten a little tough. You were talking about, hey, you may not be much of a speaker. You did your talking on the field, and that Golden Lions defense is doing a lot of talking tonight, too. Well, you know, when you when you out there playing defense, it's not very much to say. It's, you got to go hit somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Morgan will attempt a 27-yard field goal. That would be his second field goal of the night. The hold is good. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So with 10-22 to play, Grambling extends its lead to 10 points. It's 20 to 10, Tigers. But LC, you, you definitely, I know it's 20 to 10 right now, but that was a big stop right there for uh, your Arkansas Pine Bluff team. And, you know, talking about, you know, yourself having a great career with the Steel Curtain. These guys right here playing some Steel Curtain defense tonight. Yeah, these guys really playing good defense. I've never seen them play before, and I'm, I'm pretty inspired with some of the uh, the things that they're doing out on the field defensively. I don't, now, personally, I don't like that 3-4 defense, but uh, um, they, they seem to handle it pretty well. Yes, they do. I, I tell you, it's, it's been an exciting game. The quarterback for Grambling, though, he's giving them a tough time tonight. He's doing a lot of moving around in the pocket. And, you know, I know yourself, you got after a lot of quarterbacks in your career. What do you think about Mr. Eugene for uh, Grambling? Well, you don't let the big guy like that run around out there. You got to put some uh, some shoulder pads on him. And uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can, I think they let him uh, get away. You know, you, the quarterbacks don't want to be hit, so you hit him a couple of times. Uh, you slow them down, and uh, I, they haven't hit him right yet. Uh, but, you know, we got plenty of time. Bowen and Washington deep to receive. That is Washington at the goal line for Pine Bluff. He's out across the 10, 15. Uh, he's across the 20, out to the 25-yard line, gets across the 25 before he is brought down. And, of course, L.C. Greenwood, as we mentioned, one year a teammate of Arkansas Pine Bluff coach Lee Hardman, and earlier this week, we caught up with Coach Hardman and got his reflections of his former teammate. L.C. Greenwood is probably on the way to the Hall of Fame. And, you know, when you got a guy from your school, uh, one that you played with, 
headed to the Hall of Fame, that's, that's a big deal. Uh, LC bring a lot, a lot to the school. One is name. And then Finn here, a member of the SWAC, uh, Finn in the SWAC, uh, it just, it's just an opportunity for us to give back to him a little, little recognition. But it's also, LC would probably be the first to say, I want to help the school and get the school back to a level that it can be competitive. So it's, 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 it's a, a thing where we're helping each other. Certainly Arkansas Pine Bluff has struggled over the last couple of years, but Lee Hardman with his coaching staff, he has assembled too. Monty Coleman, Jackie Harris, Willie Davis, these guys, almost 40 years of NFL experience between them. Seems like, Kelsey, they are definitely on the right track. Yeah, I think the problem is with players. I don't think they're getting players. They, they, they get some players I think they'll be able to compete in this way. Well, LC, I don't, I don't think that the facilities are a problem because this is an excellent <laughs> facility that you guys have here on campus right in the center of campus excellent facility so I think coach Harmon he's gonna get some players in here yeah well you know you, <laughs> if players come to the school and they see these facilities then I, I think they're gonna be happy with that and uh, you, you know you always want that when you go to, to a school you want to go somewhere where you can you can enjoy the place that you're playing it's a third down and three for love lady and the Golden Lions with the blitz on the corner. Kenneth Petway was coming hard and the pass incomplete intended for Kerry Washington. That'll bring up a punting situation. Well, he won four Super Bowls, anchored that steel curtain defense 13 years in the NFL. Elsie Greenwood, thanks so much and congratulations on your honors this weekend in Pine Bluff. Well, guys, it's great being here. It's, uh, and it's always great to be able to see the game from this position. And uh, I thank you guys for letting me be with you for a couple of moments and uh, it's been a great weekend. We do get a nice thank view, you. don't we, if nothing else. Yes, thank you, thank you. Elsie <laughs> Greenhouse. <laughs> Former Golden Lion here in Pine Bluff joining us here. What a treat to have one of the all-time greats of the NFL joining us on what has been a great football game tonight. That is going to draw a flag from our interference and Grambling driven all the way back well inside the Tigers 10-yard line and we're going to get another dead ball personal foul that will come after the play. So there is laundry on the field everywhere. That, that's going to be against Amp Boom, who does a great job getting down there and getting down there, covering that kick. But at the last minute, he gets there a little bit too soon. He has to pull up a little bit. But it looks like he got hit in the back on that play by one of the Gremlin defenders. Now remember, there is no halo rule anymore in college football, but that doesn't mean you can hit the guy before the ball gets to him. <laughs> you, you still, you still have to wait and let the uh, person receiving the punt get his hands on it before. You try and label him with your own personal tattoo. <laughs> well, if, if you're gonna get back there and catch punts in the, in the uh, college football, <laughs> you better get there, get back there and strap it on and be ready because that can happen to you. So I'm sure we're discussing what penalty occurred when. I believe the Grambling penalty will come after. Play. We got a 15-yard kick catch interference on the kicking team. After the play was over. We got a personal foul on receiving team, 15 yards and 15 yards. Well, I think right there, Barry, what happened is uh, the Gremlin punt returner got hit so hard that one of his guys tried to retaliate after the play. So you, you. So each team will surrender 15 yards, but the end result is that Grambling will have an opportunity to foul. add to its 10-point lead when we come back to Pine Bluff. by air so can you they'll get there by land so can you either way you get there the destination will be Birmingham Alabama Saturday December 13th the SWAT championship returns to Birmingham Alabama the East and West champions will be there will you I joined the Navy because I had a plan. I wanted to work for myself. The Navy taught me the discipline I needed to achieve that goal. It gave me the strength, body, and mind. And the knowledge to get ahead. It was the building block for my success. Today, I own my own business. The Navy gave me more than just a strong foundation. 
gave me the courage I needed to find the person in me. Navy, accelerate your life. May I have the ring? Navigator. There are those who travel and those who travel well. With Sam Shade, Barry Milligan back with you in Pine Bluff after the penalties are assessed. You watch right here. Rambling has Amp. the ball, but was that a just penalty? Yeah, that, that was definitely just because Amp, Amp Boone, he got pushed into the guy, but he has to pull off at some point. There's a little shove right there, but the officials missed that. You have to give that the returner, Mills, a chance to catch the ball right there. Well, in any event, that was a, a helmet to the chest contact. That, that could have been called a couple of different ways, if not an interference penalty the way it was called. But First Bruce down, Eugene back on the field having set a new Grambling State pass completion record, 485 now and counting for the junior All-American. This time out, backs are in the eye, and the handoff to Quan, and he coughs it up. The ball is on the field. This would be a huge turnover and a break for Pine Bluff. And that was uh, Courtney McLemore, the free safety coming up, and he just takes the ball from the running back. Watch, watch on this play, and we can get a replay of this coming up. He just takes the ball from the guy's hands. We have not gotten a call yet. But Ab Klein has gotten up. And now the ball comes popping out of there. Jonathan Banks, the big left tackle for Grambling, looked as if he had his hands on it, and this is going to go to a conference. It's Grambling's ball, second down. So a huge break for the Tigers. Grambling will keep it. You watch McLemore coming to the screen, and he just rips the ball out from Corn. And Corn has to do a better job of holding on to that football. And now you see the scramble, but Corn has to do a better job of holding on to that football. We won't see him too much tonight if he continues to do that. He's a good runner. Doug Williams has a lot to say about this kid, but he's got to hold on to the football. So they pick up six yards on the play, second and four. Here is Juan again, and picks up a couple. Not enough for the first down. Again, Courtley McLemore up there from his safety position to make the stop. And McLemore, you watch McLemore, he's coming up in there. He knows it's a run. He's getting up in there, and he's going for that oh, football. Almost pulled it out of there. And that, that's what defensive coaches are teaching now. They're teaching to go for the strip. You know, you wrap the guy, and then you pull that ball out of there. And that, a play like that turns this ball game around. Fumbles have gone so against Pine Bluff this year. They had four against Central Arkansas, six turnovers against Alcorn, three against Alabama State. Timeout. And again, Grambling has to take timeout because Bruce Eugene came to the line of scrimmage with only two seconds on the play clock. And you talk about turnovers, Arkansas Pine Bluff, they've, they've had a number of turnovers, but it looks like they're trying to turn the tables. You see defenders coming in there, stripping away at that ball. McLemore, he's making a lot of plays around the line of scrimmage. Look for Brandon to go up top for the All right, Sam, it's time for our Geico trivia question. When was the last time an undefeated Grambling team was recognized as the Black College National Champion? Log on to our website at NBCNetwork.com, give your answer, and you will be eligible for a special sports prize pack. That is our trivia question brought to you by GEICO, the sensible alternative. We'll have our answer for you coming up a little bit later. Barry, there have been a lot of Grambling champions. There have been. A lot of championships teams down there. You talk about the legendary coach, Eddie Robinson. Oh, man. The job he did there, he was there for so many years. So many great players have come through Grambling. I got to tell you, too, if, if you want to learn more about the Eddie Robinson years, the legendary coach has a book out. It's called Quotable Eddie Robinson. That's available on the all the bookstore websites and at your local bookstore, and that is really something else. 
third and one. Quan on the carry, trying to get to the boundary. He does. He's across midfield. Picks up a great block. Downfield from Tremone Douglas. He is into Pine Bluff territory, and there is another flag on the field. Quan is really running the ball tough tonight. And Gramlin did something they don't usually do. They have two tight ends in the ball game on that play. So if I was Arkansas Pine Bluff, I'd be thinking run. After the play was over, personal foul on Gramlin. So the first down will stand, but the Tigers will be marched back 15. I think that's on Quan. You, you watch the play right there. Watch the end of this play right here. You watch Quan. It's a great job. Does a great job of getting outside, cutting it up right here, turning up the field. But you watch the end of the play right here, what he does to the defender. And I, I don't think that's late because that was initiated inbounds, but that's what the, that's what the coaches, the uh, officials called on that play. Well, that's awfully close for a personal foul penalty, but it is first down. It will be first down and the ball marched back into Grambling territory at the 41 yard line. And Grambling gonna stick with the running game. Quan again gets away from the first hit and he's gone. He's at the 30, the 25 before he is run out of bounds. What a job of misdirection. Terrell Hammonds finally runs him out of bounds. You watch right here, Barry. Grambling comes back with the same play, but they run it to the other side. And you watch Quan reverse the run. his field right here. He cuts we back have and, and he's field. off to the races right Unpine here. Bluff. That's a five yard pill. They come, they come back with the same play, but they just run it to the other side, motion the tight end over, and he has, one of the defender has a chance to make a play right there. He doesn't make a tackle. You can't miss tackles against this Gramlin ball club. The, the runners are too good. You gotta get them down when you get a chance to. Brandon Sweeney had him wrapped up for a loss on the play. Couldn't complete the tackle. What strength by Ab Kwan to battle out of that. It's first down at the Pine Bluff 18. That could be a huge play in this game. Again, Grambling going to stick with the run. This time, Henry Talbert to the near side of the field. And this really is keeping in kind of the Grambling strategy coming in. They are, they are known very well, obviously, for throwing the ball all over the place. But you know, Melvin Spears says, we're going to do a little West Coast thing. We're going to pass it around short. We're going to run some clock when we feel like that we need to. And this... Might take some of the steam out of Pine Bluff for Grambling to be able to sustain a drive. Well, you watch right here. They've got two tight ends in the ball game, and this is something that you don't see out of Grambling a lot. And I think for the, the two tight end formation has the signal run for Arkansas Pine Bluff. But at the same time, you've got to watch that play out. Tolbert, the lone setback, gets the call. And this time, he is wrapped up. Brandon Sweeney doesn't let him go anymore. And that time, the middle linebacker, Brandon Sweeney, does an excellent job of making that tackle. The same tackle he should have made earlier against Quan after Quan has a big run. Gain of three on the play. Third down and seven upcoming. You watch right here. This is a counter play. They try to run back and get the linebacker going one way, but Sweeney does a great job of not overcommitting to the left side and comes back and makes an excellent tackle. Tober did, did a smart thing going down. Big Tion Lacefield was ready to lay the wood to him right there. Now one-on-one -on -one coverage far side of the field. That pass is incomplete, but flags on the play, and it looks like we're going to get interference against Ramon Douglas. Working one-on-one -on -one over there with Zachary Barnett. Zachary Barnett over there. There's there a, a lot of pushing and shoving going on between these receivers and defensive backs for Arkansas Pine Bluff. And uh, Zachary Barnett right there, I think he might have got a little bit on Douglas at the end of that play. Good to see Barnetto back on the field. He was injured earlier, so he is obviously okay back in there competing hard. Pass in the field. On the defense. First down at the spot of the foul. Okay, Barry, you watch right here. You see Eugene drop back, and he's going to Mr. Douglas all the way. Douglas is his go-to guy. Trying to hit Douglas on the fade route back there against Barnett. And Barnett just grabs him a little bit right there. You can't do that. You've got to look back for the ball. That's the one thing Barnett did not do on that play. He did not look back for the football. Sometimes you get tangled up down there. If you look back, the officials, they won't call it if you look back for the football. And it did appear as if Barnett had at least one handful of jersey. But the end result, interference in the end zone. It is first and goal for the Tigers. 
Tolbert's going to get the call, and he runs into a host of Golden Lions and is stopped for no gain on the play. Well, I'm going to tell you, Big Dwight Whitfield has had a heck of a game on that D-line. Whitfield playing an excellent ball game, getting a lot of pressure, a lot of, a lot of push up on the inside, a lot of penetration, and those guards for Grammar are going to have to do a better job of blocking Whitfield. He's getting the best of those guys tonight. So that'll bring up second and goal from the three. You see a two Again, tight end Double set tight end set. Yep, Talbert, the lone setback. Now Eugene changing the play and will bring Jesse in motion on the bootleg. He's got a receiver all alone. Touchdown, Jason Hatcher. Oh, what a call right here by Doug Williams. Excellent call. And we've got flags in the end zone. This thing's getting a little chippy down there now. They set that play up very nicely. Yes, they did. He fakes the run. They've been running that play a couple times and comes back with the bootleg and hits the tight end coming right across his drag. Yeah, pass interference on the offense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Wow, what a play. Oh, you call it exactly right, Sam, on the drag. The tight end on the right side of the field comes across coverage, and he was wide open, but obviously made a little contact to get free. Doug doesn't like it. Doug can't believe it. <laughs> you, you watch right here. You watch Hatcher. Hatcher was a tight end on the line of scrimmage, and... Eugene has to pull up right here, but he's got Hatcher wide open for the touchdown. You see Hatcher lined up on the left side, and he just drags across, and nobody goes with him. Nobody takes him across. Somebody has to take him. I think it was Small, the linebacker. The linebacker Small has to take right. Hatcher across the coverage. So that brings up second and 18, and Grambling going to come with that little screen for the wide out, and Tremone Douglas makes the catch. And it looks like Pine Bluff was ready for that play that time. Uh, Douglas caught two of those ball, two of those passes early in the ball game. They ran that play a couple of times, and Pine Bluff seems to have figured that one out. Well, the last time we saw Grambling in a big win over Alabama A&M, the, the only downside to the Tigers' performance that night, they had over 20 penalties, and they're on their way to another big, big total, even though the scoreboard reads in favor of the G-men. Eugene again over the middle. What a catch, touchdown Tigers. Tremont Douglas with his second of the night. Tremont Douglas over there working on uh, Tyrone Walker. And Walker's been playing him tough, but right there, you see a blitz by Small, and he just doesn't have a chance to get there. Douglas is having a big night tonight against this Arkansas yep. Pine Bluff team. No flags on the field, but Brian Morgan is, and he will attempt the point after for the G-Man. Trying to make it 27-10. The kick is up, and it's good. With 3.21 to go. Grambling dodges a bullet. They're able to recover what would have been a huge fumble, and a great Tremone Douglas catch puts them up big. This for all my players out there riding. Spill it. Well, that's great news. I appreciate it. Goodbye. Well, I've got some fantastic news. I'm out of here. No, it was Geico. I saved myself a bunch of money on my car insurance. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. You know how you feel when you're with someone who's fun and easy? You know, someone who gets you? That's how I feel with my new Lane Bryant catalog. They have all the casual styles that I love in plus sizes and extended plus sizes. From casual sportswear to intimate apparel to shoes and swimwear. And every outfit, every style is 100% guaranteed. Call or go online for your free Lane Bryant catalog and receive a special offer with your first order. 
Grambling with another score here in this, Sam Shade is All-American to All-American. Bruce Eugene sitting back in the pocket. You watch him right here. You're going to see the linebacker, Michael Small, Michael Willis, blitz, but he doesn't get there in time. Allows Eugene just enough time, and you watch the catch by Douglas, and he's got Tyrone Walker draped all over him, but he has enough concentration to make that catch. Like you said, All-American to All-American. I mean, Eugene stands there, the big kid in the face of the blitz, holds his ground. Tramon Douglas stretches out. That is a great play. There we see the numbers on Eugene, including the first half totals, nearing the 7,500 mark for his yard mark for his career. Coming in, he was sixth all time in, SWA, in the uh, swag standings in terms of yardage. He will certainly move up. Keep in mind, the season for Grambling is only half over, and he's got another year. I tell you, he's definitely, he, he's definitely going to be well over 4,000 yards once again this season, Barry, because at this pace, he is definitely going to make things happen. So now we will see if Pine Bluff can make something happen. This drive will start from the Golden Lions. 17-yard line, first and 10, and now Pine Bluff trailing by 17. They have been an outstanding second-half team. We'll see how deep this hole is. Lovely. Out of the shotgun, looking downfield. It's picked off. Picked off by Travis Massey, and he's at the 15, 10, 5. Massey dragged down at the 2. Excellent job right there. Grambling was playing zone right there, and I think they love Lady. I think he thought he had him a guy wide open, and I'll tell you, excellent play by Massey just stepping up, making a play. You watch the replay right here. You watch the replay. You see Love Lady. He's got time right. He's got a lot of time, steps up, and he doesn't see Massey come out the corner right there. Zone coverage is tough at times for quarterbacks because you don't know where those, those, those uh, cornerbacks are coming from at times, and Massey almost takes it back for a touchdown. Gets down inside the five-yard line, first and goal at the two. That is the... And that's been something that's hurt this Arkansas Pine Bluff team with the turnovers. And that's the first one of the night for him right there. First interception of the night as well as the running game goes nowhere. Whitfield again breaking through there to make the tackle, and Grambling may lose a couple on that play. Dwight Whitfield, he's not listed as a, star, as a starter for this Arkansas Pine Bluff team, but he hadn't been blocked the night, Barry. He's getting a lot of penetration on the inside of that defense. First interception of the year from Massey, a loss of three on the play. will bring up second and goal from the five. I'll tell you, Grambling's going to have to go to the air right here. They hadn't had a lot of success running the ball when they get down here inside the 10-yard line. Hand off to the near side as Mays trying to find pay dirt, and he does. Mays does a great job right now. That's Michael O'Ree, the 230-pound sophomore from Bogalusa. Michael O'Ree, who is also a guy working third, fourth string, and they have gone really deep into that depth chart right now, but the guys are coming through. Oh, Reed, he just, on that play right there, he should have been tackled. He should have been stopped. He shouldn't have gotten in the end zone, but he shows a lot of strength. You watch the replay. He does an excellent job of just using his strength to get in. So after the turnover, it takes only two plays. And you watch the replay right here, Barry. You see old Reed. Oh, Reed just gets right there. And the corner has a chance. He's got to make that tackle right there. The cornerback has to make that tackle. You can't allow O'Ree Reed to get in the end zone. A big guy like that, you've got to take his legs from under him. You gotta, can't hit him high like that. you never make that play. Second touchdown of the year for O'Ree makes it 34-10 time now for our trivia question answer. When was the last time an undefeated Grambling team was recognized as the Black College National Champion? Well, there have been a bunch of them, but you have to go all the way back to 1955. The G-Men were 10-0. and And that is this week's trivia question brought to you by GEICO, the sensible alternative. Doug Williams has had a couple of black college national champions of his own in the last couple of years, but 
haven't been able to run the tape and get that perfect season. Well, they're playing some pretty tough competition oh, also. Yeah. They lost a tough game to McNeese State a couple weeks ago. And I tell you, they could have easily won that ball game. But McNeese, the number one, one double-A team in the country. Oh, that is a big hit coming up there. Cedric Bowen took a shot. From Charles Woods. Yes, Charles he Woods did. Got laid the wood to him. Yeah, backup running back running oh, down yeah. there making plays on special teams. He wants Doug to give him some handoffs. Well, that was one of those. We talk about that McNeese State again just to finish the point. Grambling did lose that game, but again, they put up some huge numbers, did Bruce Eugene. And they led most of that ball game. Uh, the Grambling people feel like they definitely should have won that ball game. Felt like they won the game, but they just didn't win it on the scoreboard. John Pierce, the 6'2 junior, has checked in now at quarterback for Pine Bluff. And the Golden Lions are going to run the ball. That is Calvin Thomas in a tailback who gets a nice gain and a first down. And we knew we were going to see Mr. Pierce tonight. You know, talking, talking to Coach Harmon, Coach Harmon talked about the fact that they play two quarterbacks. So it's not that he's upset, but you look at the numbers on Pierce. You know, Pierce, Pierce is over 1,000 yards this year, 43.6 completion rate and 10 touchdowns. So this is a guy that, you know, he's going to get some playing time. And I don't think Coach Harmon is upset with Love Lady, but I think he just wants to change things up a little bit. Well, this is the guy who has been and the key off the bench, a real spark as Pierce is tackled. He drops the ball. Drops the ball, and who comes up with it? Looks like it's one of those huge offensive linemen for Arkansas Pine Bluff who came up with it, I believe. It was number 73, Sedarin Freeman. So Darren Freeman with great awareness right there for a big guy to jump on that football. Because big guy. That could have been ugly right there. He reported at 390 and has lost 40 pounds. And they they said, we still think there's an athlete inside him well, somewhere. Watch the quickness right here. Getting that ball and <laughs> scooping it up. And he wants to take off. He wants to run with the ball. Well, big... So Darren Freeman lost his helmet, kept his head, and certainly had his wits about him, too, to come up with that fumble. They call him Smurf. It's a big <laughs> Smurf, dog. Gee whiz. <laughs> lost the six on the play. Pierce now on second and 16. Scrambling out of the pocket, throwing downfield. That is a wounded duck that should have been intercepted. That ball was so poorly thrown that Aaron Bridges couldn't even get to it. Pierce is a little bit slow getting up right there. Uh, only a four-man rush, and it looks like Lovelady is a little bit shaken up on the sideline also. So I tell you, it looks like Pierce is going to have to stay in the ball game. Well, Kerry Washington, the 6'2 sophomore wide receiver, is the third-string quarterback. So we'll keep an eye out if number five gets up and starts taking some snaps or loosening up. They are, looks as if they're taking Antonio Lovelady to the locker room. Yeah, Barry, he looks like he's done. You look at his face right there. He's definitely in some pain. Uh, we've got to find out what that injury is. Third down and 16. Pierce under big pressure again. Rolling to his right, throwing back over the middle. Oh, what a catch. That is a magnificent grab. That is Andeldris Johnson, who went high in the air, and it looked like it was almost kind of a tip drill to himself. You watch Pierce right here. This is a great throw, running to his right and throwing back to his left. Oh, what a catch. Johnson jumps up and makes an excellent catch on that play. And that huge play, 31 yards for Arkansas Pine Bluff, brings us to the end of three quarters. Well, the Golden Lions have shown the ability to come back in the fourth. They will have to do it again. They trail Grambling by 24. MBC salutes historically black colleges and universities. The name Grambling State University has been synonymous with excellence for 100 years. Excellence in academics, GSU offers 72 undergraduate and graduate programs taught by a distinguished faculty. Excellence in athletics, GSU's athletic teams routinely rank among the NCAA's best. And Grambling's world-famous marching band is simply excellent. So if I had to describe our legacy, it would be a legacy of excellence. Excellence in athletics, in academics, and in co-curricular activities. Tomorrow belongs to the youth of today. MBC salutes Grambling State for its role in securing our future.
For the short, for the tall, for the big, for the small, for the day trippers, for the sunbathers, for the surfers, for the divers, for the ball players, for the fans, for those who speak up, for those who stand out, for the singers, for the original, for the responsible, for the kissers, for the committed, for those who love you, for those who love you not, for those who love you a little, for those who love you a lot, for the hot days, for the starry nights, for the endless days of summer, for all of us, for everyone. Tomorrow at 5, Southern Battles JSU. We told you, we're not just playing games. We're making history on NBC Sports. Well, we're not just playing games. We're making history here on NBC. Great to have you with us with Sam Shea, Barry Milligan here with you in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Grambling had a big-time battle on its hands through two and a half quarters, but the Tigers have been able to stretch things out here a little bit, but... Pine Bluff coming back now, driving into Grambling territory after that completion to Cedric Bowman. Yeah, Grambling has come back out of the second half and has 17 unanswered points. Going into halftime, uh, they had a chance to score that touchdown and put them up by seven, but they've come back out this second half on fire. So after a gain of eight on the Pierce to a Bowen completion, second down and two now with the ball resting at the Grambling 38-yard line. Tigers showing blitz, and they're going to run the little timing route to the far side of the field. It looks as if Octavius Bond had his hands all over Brian Jones on the far side of the field, but we've seen these uh, flags tonight go both ways. Yeah, definitely in the secondary. We've oh, seen, uh, on the defense against an eligible receiver, automatic first down. Yeah, Mr. Bond, Mr. Bond has been pretty busy tonight, Barry. They, they've gone after him a lot. But the reason for that is because he's out there playing one-on-one -on -one coverage on the corner. And that island, as you know, well, as I know, as a former defensive back, it's pretty tough out there on that island. So he's definitely having to work, work hard tonight. I think George McCollum, our referee, may have been the busiest guy on the field tonight. <laughs> a lot of flags. Bro. First and ten now at the Grambling 29. Pierce out of the shotgun, wants to throw. Big pressure again. He avoids it looking downfield. And the pass almost intercepted. Thrown behind Cedric Bowen. And there is a late flag on the field as well. Brian Jones was downfield at about the 10-yard line. Downfield on the offense. I believe that's going to be the center, Jackie Skipper, who was downfield after Pierce got flushed out of the pocket. Well, he doesn't need to be downfield because in this second half, that Grambling defensive front four has did a, done a great job of rushing the passer. First half, they had some blisses. They tried to get to the quarterback with blisses, but I think they realized that their four-man rush can get there. So th those four guys up front for Grambling are doing a great job. You got Patton, who put the pressure on then, Zachary, Kador, and also Arner. They're doing an excellent job of rushing the passer up front. First and 15 after the penalty with the ball now moved back to the 34-yard line. Two seconds on the play clock. They get it away. Pierce wants to throw again. He's got single coverage down the field and overthrows. And Deldris Johnson, who had a step or two on the defensive back, that was six, but they couldn't connect. Talking about a step, he had a couple steps on him. I know Pierce wishes he could have this pass back. He steps up in the pocket right here and makes the throw. He's got the receiver wide open, oh but he's, boy. he's got to get that thing to the receiver. He overthrows him by just a couple yards. Johnson had three yards on Travis Massey in the back of the end zone, but Pierce just couldn't find him. And Johnson showed a lot of speed on that play. I tell you, he was pulling away from the defensive back on that. Have your attention, please. Penalties on the field. We are going to get another on the defense five yard penalty. Five yard penalty against Grambling because the Tigers broke the huddle with 12 men on the field. Oh, right on that play right there, Barry. It just looks like uh, Grambling. You know they're trying to get certain personnel groups on the field. You watch right here, and one of the, one of the uh, defensive linemen, Joshua Kador. 
Yeah, Kador, Kador is in there because he thinks they're going to run a four-man rush, but they've got three linemen in the game right here. They've got uh, three defensive linemen where they move a linebacker up on the defensive end spot. So in actuality, they only have four defensive linemen. Well, he's 6'5 and 280. Does he think he's invisible out there? We're going to find him. And I'm telling you, Grambling's D-line just found Pierce for a big sack. 16, there is Marcus Yanez, the junior, coming up his third tackle for loss on the season. And Marcus Yanez, he's a backup linebacker, but what Grambling likes to do is on passing downs, they like to blitz those linebackers and line them up at defensive end and use that speed. After the play was over, personal foul on the defense. That player has been ejected from the ball game. Oh, my. That is Jimmy Zachary who is going off the field. And it does appear Jimmy Zachary has been dismissed and from the game. And that's a shame because uh, Jimmy, Z Jimmy Zachary and the rest of that front front line for Gramlin have been having an excellent ball game. And you see Doug over there, and Doug is letting him have it because that's a selfish play right there. That's just selfish. You can't hurt your team like that. And you watch right here. And, and Zachary's battling. He's battling with uh, one of the off Arkansas Pine Bluff offensive linemen. And battling you know, with Jackie Skipper. Well, it's first down anyway for Pine Bluff. And all kinds of time this time for Pierce going to the far side of the field. But out of the reach of Brian Jones deep in the end zone. And Zachary, uh, he's ejected from this ball game. I'm not surprised that he's not having to leave the field because most of the time when, you're, when you get ejected from a ball game, you, you're supposed to leave. He's not a big guy. He's not hard to find on that bench over there. Well, in the NFL, that is the rule. If you are ejected, you leave the field. And Doug, yeah, you just, oh, boy. You don't want your veteran player, Zachary, a junior out there along that defensive line. Those are the guys you expect to set the tone and be leaders for your club. As Pierce comes to the near side of the field, battling hard for yardage is Kerry Washington. He is run out of bounds at the nine yard line. That is very close to the necessary yard yardage needed for a first down. You watch Pierce right here come in. Excellent throw right there, putting it right where the receiver can catch it and turn up and make something happen. You know, Washington right there, he knows where that first down is. He's trying to get there. Travis Massey a little banged up. Massey, the cornerback, uh, he looks he looks like to me, he, he looks like he's a little bit banged up. It looks like he might have got his legs tangled up a little bit with Washington right there. It looks like he'll be back, though. Well, he has had a big night. The 5'8 senior from Brunswick, Georgia, with an interception, his first of the year, that he almost returned for a touchdown, just two yards shot. Well, you know, watching Massey tonight, I kind of see why it's only his first interception. From the nine yard. You know, because he, he's doing an excellent job. It looks like tonight, it looks like Arkansas Pine Bluff, they tried to stay away from him, but, you know, sooner or later, you know, they tried to go, they tried to go there, and he made them pay. So the chains are down. It is first and goal from the nine-yard line. For the Golden Lions, who have four wide receivers in the set, Pierce with the snap, with a timing pattern deep in the end zone. Did he get a foot in? No. They say no. It's very close. I tell you, I thought Kerry Washington might have dragged that toe. I thought so, Barry. It looks like uh, he hit the cone right there at the end. I thought he, I thought he was going to give that to him. We watch, we watch Pierce right here drop back. And this is a nice throw by Pierce because he's throwing this ball to the cone. They teach you to throw that fade route to the cone, and he throws it directly there. And that's a touchdown. Looks like to me, Barry, that's a touchdown. See if his left foot, his right foot doesn't get in bounds. See if his left foot does before he goes out. It's pretty close. Very, he, and he also, he hits that cone right there, so that might be what the official was looking at. Second down, pass over the middle, incomplete again. Pierce trying to find Washington on a quick slant. And Washington seems to be his favorite target right now. That's three passes in a row to Washington. And it looks like uh, Pierce found his go-to receiver. Six catches, 67 yards. And one of the reasons I said that, Barry, is because on that last play, uh, Brian Thomas Miller, he was wide open on the top of the screen but it looks like Pierce just didn't have a chance to find him. We see him up top matched up against Bond. I think they're going to go to him right here, possibly. On third down, across the middle again, Pierce just overthrows Brian Thomas Miller. He had him on the slant. 
all alone, but just overthrowing. And they've been working on Octavius Bond up top mm -hmm. right there. Uh, Pierce, if he makes that throw, that's a touchdown right there because Thomas Miller did an excellent job of running that slant route right there, getting inside the defensive back. So not much of a decision, really, with Pine Bluff trailing by 24, 11.51 to go in the ball game. When you get a score right here, you come back and play some good defense, and you're back in this ball game. Fourth and goal. And again, they have Thomas Miller on one-on-one -on -one coverage, and again they go to him, and this time it's for six. And you know on that play right there, Pierce helped Thomas Miller get open on that play. Thomas Miller was covered initially by Bond. Bond took away that inside route, but what Miller did, he changed the route up, broke back outside, and Pierce got away from the pressure, had a chance to deliver that football. Brian Thomas Miller, the six-foot sophomore with his third touchdown catch of the year, makes it 34 to 16. Michael Sellers on to attempt the point after high snap, and the kick is blocked. And it will roll out of the end zone, so the score will remain. Grambling 34, Pine Bluff 16. We will see if the Golden Lions defense can make a stand and give the offense a chance to cut into this big lead. The Golden Lion doesn't have a whole lot to celebrate, but the party's still on in Pine Bluff regardless. Because remember, this is the last home game of the year for Arkansas Pine Bluff, and things not going too well right now with the homestanding Golden Lions trailing Grambling 34-16. I think there's still a lot of roar left in these lines tonight, though, Barry. That kickoff will be fielded over on the far side near the Grambling bench area picked up over there by number 33 Gideon Leonard. Yeah, one of the up backs, uh, he got that ball. It looked like he didn't know what to do with it for a minute there. A lot of those up backs are used to blocking on those kickoff returns, not returning the ball. There is our NBC player of the week, Bruce Eugene, coming off an October 11th performance against Mississippi Valley in which he had 324 total yards and four touchdowns. And I tell you, with the numbers that kid has put up this year, those aren't even close to the biggest numbers he has had this season. We'll take a break and come back 11.38 to play in this game as Pine Bluff coach Lee Hardman's team's trails by 18. We welcome you 
back to Pine Bluff with Sam Shea. Barry Milligan here with you. 11.38 to go in this game. What was a hotly contested game before Grambling able to score a touchdown and take a 17-10 lead into the halftime locker room. And from that point, the Tigers 17 more unanswered points until Pine Bluff able to get back on the board. So Bruce Eugene brings the Tigers to the line of scrimmage, first and 10 from the Tigers 23, as we hope you're enjoying our swag game of the week here on NBC. We have certainly had a big time bringing it to you. Eugene looking down the field as the receiver broke off the pattern and then just absolutely stopped dead for Moses Harris. But time now for our long distance play of the game brought to you by Imer and Pharmaceuticals, the official pain reliever of the swag. And right here, we see Bowen drop the kickoff right here, but he picks it up and hits right up the middle right here. <laughs> and look at that speed as he's running. The kicker's not going to be able to tackle, tackle him right there. Excellent job by Bowen on the 61-yard kickoff return. Cedric Bowen with our long-distance play of the game brought to you by Imerin, the brand you can trust. Second and 10 for the Tigers as Eugene on the play fake throws back across the grain and it's incomplete. Boy, that just shows you the strength again of that young man as he was trying to find Jason Hatcher who caught a touchdown pass earlier in the game. And Tyrone Walker on that play to safety. He's having a great game for Arkansas Pine Bluff. He gets in there at the last minute and knocks that ball away from Hatcher. Matter of, he covered two guys on that play, Barry. He covered the tight end in the flats, and he dropped back and made a play on the crossing tight end. So, Mr. Walker's having a great game tonight. Well, and we expected that. With 11 passes defensed coming in, he was number two in the swack in that category. On third and ten, Eugene trying to keep the drive alive. Oh, way overthrows his intended receiver. Almost picked off by Zachary Barnett. But way too high for Chris Day, and the Tigers will have to kick it away. So... Three and out right after Pine Bluff. You know, this thing, it, they aren't dead yet. This team just will not go away. There's a lot of fight left in these guys tonight, Barry. I tell you, defensively, they've stepped up at times tonight and made plays and given the ball to their offense when they've had opportunities to do so. And right there, Eugene, you don't see that too often out of him. You know, throwing the ball a little bit too high for his receivers. He's usually a very accurate quarterback. High snap, that is almost blocked. A very short kick that takes a grambling bounce into Pine Bluff territory and wind it on earth. Does the deep back put a hand on that ball? I think Kerry Washington perhaps thought it had already been touched by one of his teammates. And we see Doug over there, you know, he's talking to Eugene. And Eugene, Eugene's an All-American quarterback. But Doug Williams, hey, this is a guy that played and won the Super Bowl. He doesn't care who you are. He's going to get on your butt. Doug says, what, what do you mean breaking my completion record? <laughs> <laughs> it is first down Pine Bluff from the Golden Lions 41-yard line. Pierce out of the shotgun. Trying to put some life back into this team and the crowd completes the pass and into Grambling territory goes Calvin Thomas with a first down for the Lions all the way down to the 44-yard line. Calvin Thomas on that play right there. You, you watch right here, the back gets out of the backfield. The linebacker just takes too long getting out there to the flat, and he's going to get beat upfield right there. Calvin Thomas does a great job right there just catching the ball and getting upfield and getting that first down. From the 44, Pierce out of the shotgun. Four wide receivers set. He's flushed out of the pocket, looking for running room. Gets it to Thomas again, who slips away from a tackler and gets down to the 35-yard line. Going to be inside the 35, actually, to the 34. May have enough for another first down. You got to watch this play, Perry, right here. Watch Pierce back here making things happen, sliding off defenders. And watch him right. He's going to make a block. He tries to get a block for the receiver after he throws the pass. You're talking about a guy that wants to win this ball game. Pierce definitely wants to. Thomas knocked out of bounds by John Petty. It is a first down, 10 yards on the completion from the 34. Pierce again with time to throw across the field, and he overthrows Brian Jones at the 22 yard line. He had him. He had him wide open right there on that play. He's got to get that ball down a little bit. Uh, Pierce, you know. And now the receiver downfield. The receiver was covered up. Well, they had that happen uh, early on in the ball game, but back on that play right there. 
Pierce has to make that throw. He didn't start the ball game, so obviously, you know, coming off the bench in the second half, you know, he's a little cold, but he's had a chance to, you know, get a little rhythm, you know, get warmed up. And quarterbacks sometimes have to get out there and play a little bit and get that arm warmed up and loose. So, you know, look for him to make some plays later on. Five-yard penalty for an eligible receiver downfield, so that'll bring up a first and 15 situation. The blitz picked up nicely by Pine Bluff. Pierce with a flag down, throws downfield, and it's picked off. Picked off by Michael Degree, and then he fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by Pine Bluff. But again, there is a flag on the play. Looks like the officials are going to discuss this because on that play, uh, Degree, you know, who comes to this ball game with a bad hamstring, <laughs> you know, you saw him early in the ball game, you saw a receiver run by him. But, well, uh, the end result here, Grambling's going to have to accept the penalty because if they don't, the Pine Bluff's going to have the ball at the seven yard line because they turned it right back over. Well, Doug, Doug he's, he's going to have to accept this penalty. Uh, you look at Doug. <laughs> Holding. On the offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. So wipe away an interception for Michael Degree because he fumbled it right back to Pine Bluff. But this is going to march the Golden Lions back to the Grambling 49-yard line, and it'll be first down and 25 to go. Well, you, you watch Pierce right here uh, scrambling, trying to make something happen. You know, he's got a receiver down there, but that ball is just way too high. He's got to get the ball down. And you watch Degree right here. Degree, you can tell he's a little gimpy. He's not used to running with that football in his hands also. Kerry Washington slapped that out of there. It looked like a point guard, didn't he? <laughs> wow, looks like he was like, hey, you got, you're not going to use that crossover on me That's tonight. right, baby. Showed him too much of the ball, and Washington popped it out of there. First and 25. Pierce out of the shotgun, big rush. He's going downfield. Man-to-man -man coverage, and he just can't get it. To his wideout, Kerry Washington, he tried to put enough air under that ball to allow Washington to run down and get underneath it, but it was just a couple of yards overthrown. And Washington got behind the coverage right there. They're working on Octavius Bond again, and Bond has been having a long night. These receivers are really going after Bond, so you know he's going to have to step it up a little bit here in the second half. Arkansas Pine Bluff trying to rally. This, of course, would put the Golden Lions at two and six and would guarantee a third straight losing season for Lee Hardman, something that they would desperately love to avoid. Draw play coming back up the middle to Billy Moody. We haven't seen much of Moody in an awfully long time. He picks up seven, maybe eight on the play, but still, it's going to be third down and very long for the Golden Lions. You're talking about Hartman there. You know, talking to Coach Hartman uh, on yesterday, you know, he we asked him about, you know, accepting the pressure, the pressure that comes along with coaching here, you know, at this school. They're looking for a winner. You know, they want this team to win. They've got a lot of fans that show up in Hartman. You know, he feels like he's just got to just keep working, you know, keep coaching his guys and let his team play and make plays. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. Well, that third and 18 pass is corralled by James Tate, a junior wide receiver from Newelton, Louisiana. And that picks up all but six yards. And that's a great catch by Tate because that ball was thrown a little behind him as well. 12 yards on the completion, and I guess you could say pretty much this is the play of the game right here on fourth down and six. And we're going to see some pressure from Grambling. Grambling's going to blitz, blitz uh, Pierce right here. They're coming after him. Bringing six down the field, overthrown, and that will turn the ball over on downs to Grambling with 8-14 to play. This Grambling uh, defense has done an excellent job of uh, making plays when they've had to in this ball game. Fourth and six right there. They step up and, you know, they send pressure, get after Pierce a little bit, and he throws the ball a little bit too high for his receiver. And you look at Coach Hartman right there. Uh, Carmen has, Hartman has done a good job with this ball club, but, you know, this season, Sam, NBC Sports is going to premiere a special five-part series. NBC Biographies profiles some of America's most famous black athletes, Tiger, Michael, Jordan, the Williams sisters, Shaq, and Kobe. Mark your calendars. This is a great series. NBC Sports Biographies premieres October 22nd. On the Grambling handoff, 
Big tackle in the backfield by Patrick Okoye. That is going to be a loss of yardage, loss of about four on the play, second and 14 for the Tigers. Yeah, Corey comes up, he steps up and has a big stop right there. Arkansas Pine Bluff thinking run all the way on that play. Okoye, a big time weightlifter, 6'5", 250 pounds as a sophomore, has a very bright future here in Pine Bluff. Yeah, he's a strong defensive tackle inside. Second and 14, the handoff to Quan. And he breaks through across the 30-yard line out to about the 33. Gets back the lost yardage and more, but still a third and long upcoming for the Tigers. Well, you saw Corn on that play right there. It looks like when Gramlin really wants to run the football, control the clock, control the tempo of the ball game, they want to get the ball in Corn's hands because he seems to be the power runner for this Gramlin team. See a smile on Doug Williams' face down there on that sideline. Well, he's got a smile because he's just seven minutes away from five and two and four and zero oh in the league. He's going to see right now if his team can pick up a first down. Come on, with a flag on the field, has the necessary yardage as he's run out of bounds, getting up to the Tigers' 41-yard line. But we'll check the flag. Holding against Grambling, so we'll bring it back. Play, we see Corn trying to get to the corner. You know, it, this guy, he's a tough inside runner, but he can also get to the corner. On the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot. So that will drive the Tigers way back. Now they're going to have a uh, third and long on this play right here. going to be interesting to see if Arkansas Pine Bluff wants to get after Eugene on this play right here. Put some pressure on him because when he has time to sit back there in that pocket, he can pick you apart, Barry. And, Sam, I, I just have to make the point, you know, we, we've seen Grambling on several occasions this year. They just have so much talent. They're able to win games like this where they have 20-plus penalties. But, you know, you look farther ahead. They have games at Jackson State. They will have the big Bayou Classic with Southern. I'm just not sure that they're going to be able to commit 20-plus penalties and be able to win those games. And we saw that Southern Ball Club last week, Barry. You and I did that game down in Baton Rouge. Good club. Very good defensive ball club. And also, they've got an offense pretty similar to this grappling attack. You know, they spread you out and throw the ball around. So, you know, grappling, they're going to have to, you know, the penalties, they're going to have to cut back on some of those penalties. They want to be successful in this swag, swag this year. Looking for four straight titles as Kerry Washington back deep to receive the Grambling punt standing at his own 35-yard line with 6.04 to play. Kick away by Darian Morgan. Fielded at the 45, and he falls ahead for a couple of yards before the tackle is made by Terry Cooper. 5.57 to go, and Grambling 18 points up on Pine Bluff.
34-16. Grambling in the lead here with 5.57 to play. Barring a miracle, you would think that this would be victory number 48 for Doug Williams as the head coach of the G-Men in his sixth season. But we will see what Pearson Company can manufacture here late in the game. That pass out of the hands of Cedric Bowen. And with that, time to revisit our Earl Postal keys to victory, starting with the Tigers. We look at the keys to victory for Grambling. We talked about controlling the tempo, and they've done that. You know, they've thrown the ball, they've, pat, they've run the ball. They've been able to do all those things. They won the turnover battle tonight. They've caused, caused a couple turnovers. And also, the special teams hadn't been too solid, but the offense has made up for that tonight. Pierce throws it way downfield. The receiver broke off the pattern at the 35-yard line. Brian Jones just stopped on the pattern. And conversely, our Aeropostal keys for Pine Bluff. And you look right here, you see they had to press Eugene. They did it early in the first half, but they hadn't been able to do it in the second. Also, they weren't able to get the run, they weren't able to run the ball, get that established. And also the penalties and turnovers have hurt this ball club, ball club tonight. And those are our Aeropostal keys to victory. A little more key for the G men. We'll take a look at Coach Hartman on the sideline. I, I tell you, Barry, talking to him yesterday, you know, he, he really just loves this program and this football team. And he's done a lot of things in practice to try to, you know, turn things around. You know, we talked to him about the special teams, and that's been a plus tonight. We talked to him about the penalties and turnovers and you know, they had, they minimized those tonight, but, you know, they face a grappling ball club that's, you know, one of the top teams in this conference year in and year out, and, you know, it's just a tough outing for these guys. Well, it is, and, you know, again, if there's any consolation to Pine Bluff, I mean, they really played Grambling so hard for two and a half quarters. They didn't make the huge mistakes and multiple kinds of turnovers that have taken them out of games so often this year. Barry, another thing about this uh, Pine Bluff team is, you know, visiting practice yesterday and having a chance to, you know, talk to uh, a guy like Money Coleman that played 16 seasons in the NFL with the Washington Redskins, uh, three Super Bowl rings, and they also have a guy down there, they've got a big tight end, Jackie Harris, that also, he coaches tight ends and offensive linemen here, and he's, he's doing a great job of coaching, so they're going to be a good team. Grambling just dodged a bullet right there because Greg Fassett had no idea that that ball had just hit him in the back of the foot, but Grambling able to recover. Coming up, will these Tigers be in Birmingham? Well, NBC will for the SWAC championship game. That comes your way December 13th, 2 o'clock in the afternoon from Birmingham. And that is a great weekend, all told. All 10 bands from the SWAC are going to be there performing at the Birmingham Fairgrounds on Friday night prior to that Saturday afternoon game. That is going to be a huge weekend. Log on to NBCNetwork.com and click on the SWAC logo for all the information. Now, Bramblin are going to run it out from deep out of its own end zone and battling, battling, getting way out almost near midfield is Henry Talbert. That will make up for a lack of rushing yards for Mr. Talbert throughout this game. <laughs> you watch the play right here, getting in behind these big offensive linemen. You see the pull right there, opening things up for Talbert, and Talbert has some speed right here. You watch him take off, he's almost pulling away, and the defender's trying to knock that ball out of there, but Talbert is just too strong and doesn't let go. 53 yards on the carry for Talbert, out to the 48-yard line, first down Tigers. Five minutes to go in this ball game. Backs are in the eye. The up man gets the carry. That is big Reuben Mays rumbling, rumbling to the 35, 30. Reuben Mays to the 25, down to the 22-yard line for the big 245-pound freshman. And Reuben Mays puts a Mays. wicked stiff on him on, some, on one of the defenders. You watch right here, you watch Mays bust through the line of scrimmage, break, break a tackle, and Walker, who's had a great game tonight, he's just not enough to break down Big Mays. Reuben Mays, 245, and then some out of Memphis, Tennessee. How'd you like to go after him, Sam? Well, I'll tell you what, Barry, yeah. I'd have to go after him low. You were, big, you were a big run stopper. Uh -huh. I'd have to go after him low, Barry. Yeah. He's a big guy, but I'll tell you, Walker, <laughs> Walker has to get low on him right there. You see that riverboat coming at you, baby. You had 
have second thoughts. Once again, Grambling gonna stay on the ground. This time the carry to Terry and Rogers. Here we look at our West standings. We know now that Southern has won today and remains unbeaten 5-0 and in the league, 7-0 and overall, and will maintain a one-game lead as we certainly expect Grambling to continue and win this game and move to 4-0 and in the SWAC. When you talk about a tight race in the conference, uh, Texas Southern right there, 3-1. Uh, but I think the class, of, the class of the West right now has to be Grambling in our Southern. Rodgers again, the freshman, gets the call. Short yardage. To the 18-yard line, will bring up third down and about seven to go for the Tigers. Bruce Eugene has gone all the way. Thought we might see Gary Cooper a little bit in the waning moments of this one, but Eugene has gone wire to wire, and now he is going to head for Pater. He's at the 10, the 5, turns it in. Eugene, touchdown, Grambling. When Eugene gets those pads squared up and rolling, he's a tough guy to stop right there. You see the end of that play right there? You see Zachary Barnett, he just gives him a little shove right there. I don't think he wanted any part of big Bruce Eugene. The fifth rushing touchdown of the year for the Grambling All-American. And you see that hole right there. Bruce Eugene just has all kind of space to run right there. And uh, Zachary right there knows he's not going to stop him. Just gives him a little shove. Too easy. Number one, Brian Morgan will attempt to be Morgan in to attempt the point after. It's up, and it's good. It is good. And the scoreboard game. operator here has gone backwards, and I, I, I don't blame them as Grambling has put seven more on the board. And you look at Eugene right there on the bench. So he's had an excellent game. Tonight. He's an excellent job for Doug Williams. And you talk about Doug Williams and you know, talking to uh, Bruce Eugene. They've got a great relationship. There's a little bit of love and hate, but you know, in the end, they kiss and hug. Uh, Eugene, All-American candidate. Doing an excellent job, probably the best quarterback in the country. And certainly a candidate for the Walter Payton Award as the one play player of the year on offense. All right, let's take a look back now, Sam. And I drive of the game. It came late, very late in the first half. And Bruce Eugene using his feet right there to, you know, get the ball down the field. Couple penalties against Arkansas Pablo set up the touchdown for uh, Grambling. To Moses Harris inside a minute to go that allowed Grambling to take a 17-10 lead into the locker room. But boy, that, it wasn't after Pine Bluff had really captured the momentum. And I mean, the Golden Lions made a game of it. I'll tell you, I, I felt like that really hurt uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff because they went into the half, down seven, could have easily went into the half tied. But, you know, that's what happens when you commit those silly penalties. Oh, Cedric Bowen, did he hit a brick wall? The block, the block, wow. The blocking just broke down up front for Bowen right there. Uh, you know, Bowen, uh, he's too good a returner, returner for his guys to block like oh, that. He hit Joshua Bester and went down like he, oh, that he had run into a wall. Well, Bowen said he wasn't scared of Gremlin, and you know, right here he doesn't show he's scared. Right well, here. he did slip a little bit in, in his defense, but he went down in a hurry. Well, Bowen's had a good night, though. He's had a good night returning the ball. Well, he has. He needs to get a little bit more blocking on those special teams, and you know, he can make it happen. Under three minutes to go now. Pine Bluff will stay on the ground, and with the carry, that is Billy Moody. who Gets it out Billy across Moody. the 30-yard line and line. picks up first down yardage to the 32. Yeah, Moody on that play right there does a good job of uh, breaking the tackle in the secondary. Uh, free safety came up, had a chance to make that play, but doesn't. And, you know, these running backs for Arkansas Pine Bluff are impressive. They just fell behind too early, and they had to put the ball in the air too much. But I would have liked to have seen the running game for Arkansas Pine Bluff tonight. You're exactly right, Sam, is the pass complete on the far side of the field to Brian Jones. This same Arkansas Pine Bluff team, this is the, the backfield that put 234 rushing yards on Southern, exactly. but just couldn't convert. Thanks to six turnovers, they weren't able, I mean, they ran the ball up and down the field on Southern with those 234 rushing yards, which just made so many mistakes. Coach Hartman said, we, we, we don't have any toes left. We shot ourselves in the foot so many times. Well, that's been their Achilles heel all year, uh, the turnovers and penalties. 
And Pine Bluff again will stay on the ground. And again, Moody with the carry. And you see right here, these guys, they're, they're able to run the football. When they commit to running the football, they can run the football. But, you know, you fall behind in a game like this against Gramlin. And, you know, Gramlin pretty much dictates to you how, how the game is going to be played. Talking to Doug Williams, he likes to control the tempo of a ball, of a ball game. He likes to tell you what you're going to have to do. That was James Johnson who had the rushing touchdown earlier and not Moody. And now this pass is going to be intercepted, picked off by Jermaine Mills at the 15 yard line, just overthrown and out of the reach of Brian Jones. So with a minute 31 to play, Grambling will take over once again from its own 15 yard line with a big 25 point lead. So with that, we will take a break. 41-16, Grambling firmly in charge over the Golden Lions. Jazz, funk, R and B, hip hop, and gospel. NBC is your family's urban television network for music. Keep it on NBC. Tomorrow at five, Southern battles JSU. We told you we're not just playing games; we're making history on NBC Sports. They're saying hey to Sam Shade. I know it, I know it, I know it. Minute 25 on a running clock, and now Gary Cooper has taken over the offensive range for Grambling as the Tigers are now going to run this one out. Terry and Rogers, the backup tailback, gets another carry. Gary Cooper, 6 of 7 for 54 yards in his last outing when uh, Bruce Eugene was benched for much of a quarter against Mississippi Valley. Uh, the young man forgot about going to all his classes, so coach sat him down for a quarter. Gary Cooper got some early playing time, gets a little mop-up duty right here. That fumble is down and on the field. Our players of the game, none other for Grambling than Bruce Eugene set the all-time record tonight for completions at GSU. And this young man, he's gonna increase that record by oh. a whole lot before he's done. He'll break them all. You take Look at the numbers on him, 21 completions, 21 out of 40, 297 yards, three touchdowns, great night, no interceptions. And you look at him on the bench over there, they talk about they've got a tailback at ground and they got a fullback, but they call Eugene the big back. <laughs> He's a big guy. Yes, he is a big guy. Stay with the run again, and that will be the last play of the game as the clock running down now. And there is our Cedric Bowen with the 61-yard return. Had some nice runs from the tailback spot. Did all he could tonight. Cedric Bowen, our player of the game for Pine Bluff. Well, Bowen uh, had, a, had a good game. Uh, he, he tried to spark this club tonight. And you look at Coach Doug Williams right there. Excellent job on offense. Coaching this offense tonight. Great job by Doug Williams. All right, our final score. Grambling 41. 
Arkansas Pine Bluff 16. Coming up next on NBC is the Lounge. We invite you once again to join us tomorrow at 5 as Southern takes on Jackson State. Next week, another full weekend starting at 1. Dell State's homecoming against Morgan State, followed by the Magic City Classic in Birmingham as Alabama State takes on Alabama A&M. And then at 8, more homecoming festivities. Howard tries to spoil the day for NCAAT. For Satan Shane and all of us at NBC, I'm Barry Milligan. So long, everybody, from Pine Bluff.